public service announcement before we get started with our knitting. As some of you know, I volunteer at a local MS center. It is called the Marilyn Hilton Achievement Center at UCLA. Knitters and other crafters understand the benefits of our craft. So for the past five and a half years, I have taught and continue to work with center members teaching knitting as both uh, therapy and recreation. Every year I participate in the MS fundraiser walk which will be held this year on April 7th. It's always a Sunday at Pasadena at the Rose Bowl. It starts there. The MS Society allows participants to set up a home page to ask for contributions. So I am reaching out to any of you who are looking for a new charity, any of you who know anyone with MS, a family member, a co-worker, any loved ones, please consider making a donation. I've got the link below. You could just click, you'll see that it goes directly to my home page, but it's not my home page, it's through the MS Society. You can make your tax deductible donation there. So I've tried to make it easy and I've put some of my knitting logos and things up just so that you know that you're on the right page. Or you can just go to the MS Society website and make a donation. You can look up UCLA MS Achievers, that's the team name, and make a donation that way if you're more comfortable with that. Your donations are tax deductible. You can print a receipt when you make your donation. And I Thank you so much and let's move on to knitting. Hi, welcome to my YouTube channel. My name is Karen and I am your host. Welcome to all my returning viewers. Welcome to new subscribers. I see that I have a few new subscribers in the past month. Thank you, thank you. And if you don't subscribe, think about subscribing. You know, if you just want a immediate notification that there's a new video upload, I would appreciate it. Thank you so much. And I guess I should be asking you guys for a thumbs up or thumbs down. But if you don't like it, let's not be mean to each other. Just, you know, there's no need to put a thumbs down. Please just move on if it's not your thing. And if you do like it, if you could give it a thumbs up, I'd appreciate it. Thanks so much, guys. I love ponchos. <laughs> These patterns are by Mary Gildersleeve. I think her company is called Hands With Heart. I will put all the information below. And if you look on my Ravelry page, you will see all the details. I think these called for fingering weight. And I was not familiar with fingering weight when I... Gosh, I probably made these even... Uh, six or so years ago. And I didn't know what I didn't know what fingering weight yarn was. I was still learning about all the different weights of yarn. So instead, I thought, well, I'll use the lace weight and combine it with the mohair. And uh, yeah, it just I think they're just so lovely. So if you're thinking about a new project, instead of a shawl, I love shawls, but they can fall off your shoulders. And so to remedy that, I make shawls and then I sew up one side, leave room for the neck, the head and the neck, and wear them asymmetrically. I'll show you those another time. But otherwise, these are great, and with spring coming, it's time to wear my ponchos. So that's that. So those are my finished objects. Some of you have been waiting, because on Instagram, I told you that I no longer have those garter ridge nipples. So those pesky little garter tab nipples that you sometimes get from I tried blocking it out. I was unsuccessful. And then I took a crochet hook and tried, and it made it worse. So that was my fault. The shawl is lovely. It's a lot of short rows. And what I like about it is it's not very deep. So when you wrap it around your neck, there isn't all this. It's not quite as bulky here. I have some that are bulkier. But at certain times of the year, you don't need all the extra weight there. I mean, it's cold, yes. Uh, so this, but I don't know why, and I know when you wrap it, you can't see that little nipple, but it still drives me wild. 
you know, I tuck it in and, and I, st I know it's there and it's just, it make, I guess like my mistakes in my knitting, if I know they're there, they make me mad. I am making, let me tell you, this shawl, I'm making another one and this is where I test it out. This is the Leia shawl. It's by an LA designer, Anthony, wait, I need my glasses, Anthony Casalena. Uh, and I will link his information below as well. The shawl was on display at Altered Stitch. It was so beautiful. So that's when I made this one. So now I want to make another one that does not have that little nipple. And so far, where I want to show you. Here's where I cast, because there are a lot of short rows that's not falling right in the middle yet, but I'm just about to start this side of my short rows so it'll even out. But here, I don't want to hold it tightly. You can see, so here is my yarn where I did the cast on, right, right there. And that, that, my friends, I don't think I'm going to have a nipple. It looks like I will not. I'm so excited. So what did I do? It's so easy. I used DPNs. On this one, I went down two sizes. I did, you know, I started with your three stitches and then you're supposed to knit six or seven rows, whatever the pattern tells you. So I did that, then I switched I th what size am I using here? A seven. So I went down two needle sizes. I started with that, so six, five, and I did several rows, and then I picked up, you know, you're supposed to pick up around the edges, did that. Then I switched to a number five, uh, six needle, and then continued knitting. And I think I did about 20 rows maybe, so it would be this whole section here on the number six needle, so this here, right, that part, that here, that part. And then I switched to the number sevens. And I think because of the needle gauge being so small, I think that avoids that puckering up there in the center. Because so many shawls, right, they grow this way, but if this, I don't know. You know what I would love to know? If any of you have your own technique for avoiding those knots, please comment below. I'd love to hear your, uh, your little secrets. On the test knit I did for Corrado, which, uh, should I show you? He hasn't released the pattern yet. I'll just give you a quick, I'll give you a quick show. Hold on a second. Okay, here we are. As you can see, I'll hold this close. As you can see, there is no nipple there. Now this one, I wasn't sure because it is a triangular shawl. It's less likely to have that nipple. However, the triangle shawls I have made have never, I've never used the garter stitch tab cast on. And this pattern called for that. I decided to, I used the DPNs, but I used the same size as uh, the rest of the shawl. I am tighter on DPNs, <coughs> excuse me, I think I knit much tighter on DPNs than I do if I'm on long circulars for some reason, or when I'm just, you know, when you first start a project, sometimes you're a little, uh, you're, you know, you're really excited to get going and you're so intense and really getting into it. In this case, I just, I went with um, the, the DPNs and just, you know, did my garter stitch. And I think I did about the same thing. I knit about 20 rows until the stitches were starting to get too big for the needle. And then I switched to the circular. And this, it worked out perfectly. And it may have anyway, because it is a triangle shawl, but that garter stitch cast, that garter tab cast on just is, I don't know, it's like a little aggravating at times. 
But again, if you guys have some really great tips, maybe leave them below so I can share them with everyone else. I'll show you Corrado's now that it's finished. I don't want to say too much. I don't want to get too close because he has not yet released this pattern, as I mentioned. I wore it the other day uh, to my volunteer work, and everyone there went crazy. I had on... It was a little chilly, so I had on jeans and black boots and a black leather jacket, and it, you know, and this really, it was very cool, and just a black t-shirt underneath, so that was very cool. So this is really nice. Thanks, Corrado. I can't wait till you release it. Everyone will love it. Uh, so I'm not going to say any more about that because you will get all the information soon. You know, this is shawl season, folks, so let's make more shawls. I have to tell myself that because I'm so bad at making... I just... I, I get into the sweaters, which is insane. I live in Los Angeles. It is warm and sunny here, and I am happiest knitting with mohair and wool and... It just... Go figure. I guess that's my... Uh, my Midwestern upbringing hasn't left me. You can take the girl out of the Midwest, but I guess you can't take the Midwest out of the girl. Another thing I'm making, and as you guys know, as I've said at nauseam, I don't mind knitting patterns over and over again. Oh, <laughs> one subscriber, thank you, hi. She said we're soulmates because she too loves a lot of teals and pinks. Hi. And, but she does not like to um, knit patterns over and over again. And as I've mentioned before, I don't mind because if I change up the yarns, it does, to me, look different. I can, you know, play with using a solid color, colored yarn, a speckled yarn, a gradient yarn. And so it really, and if you change little things, a hem, the sleeves, a neckline, then you have a different garment. So you, you can use the same pattern, just make little adjustments. I probably shouldn't say that. You pattern designers probably don't like that. Another reason I knit a pattern multiple times, sometimes the first time I make it, it's okay, but then as I'm knitting, I think maybe I should have lengthened the sleeves, shortened the sleeves, changed the neckline, even though I love the garment, maybe the design in the garment, but uh, I just want these little changes, or, you know, I want to maybe taper it or make it A-line. So when I make another version, it looks different enough that I can live with it. Another pattern I'm making by another LA designer. Her name is Rachel. She is from Born and Raised. That is her company name. This is the pattern. I do not yet have a color printer. I'm still in the dinosaur days, so I have a black and white printer. So I apologize for the black and white photo. I made one last year. I'll insert a picture. I actually made two, and one was a little small, and so I gave it to a neighbor girl. She's so lucky, this, little, this neighbor girl. Um, and it was hot pink. It was really cool for summer and with white pants and a tank under it. Uh, so I, I want to make another one, but I th those were in solid colors, the two that I made that you'll see the picture. Now I decided, oh, <gasps> hedgehog. I am trying hedgehog fibers. They're sporty yarn. It's 100% non-superwash. Ah, the phone again. Hold on. Sorry. Sorry, have to disagree. What was that from? I Sorry, I have to disagree. Oh, <laughs> the other day, too, we were talking about uh, when I was doing my volunteer work. And the ladies are so... we a, a lot of us are close enough in age, so we have a lot of similar uh, uh, cultural references, like from television. Uh, so, And we were talking about Idris Elba and how gorgeous he is, right? Have you ever watched Luther on Netflix? Oh, you got to see it. Every time I bring up, we go crazy for him. We're like, and so one of the women said, oh, he's getting married. I go, well, I guess he's off the list. He's off the list. Idris Alba. Uh, he is hot. Right, right, ladies? He's a good looking guy. So back to hedgehog fibers. Oh, no. Oh. So we were laughing about uh, 
talk to the hand, talk to the hand. Do you guys remember that in the the old um, uh, the talk show days with uh, what was her name, Jenny? Uh, oh, there were so many. Uh, do you know? Actually, I in my previous life I was a talk show producer for a local LA talk show, and it was a lot of fun at that time in my life. I used to work in the uh, motion picture industry. I worked in international distribution. I went to the Cannes Film Festival and there was a festival in Italy and there's always one in LA. So I did that and then I ended up doing film production, uh, I'm sorry, television production as a talk show producer, associate producer for a while. And that was just, that was, that was uh, crazy pants. Fun, but crazy pants. I mean, a lot of those people that go on talk shows just want their five minutes of fame. I think they make up stories half. They're not supposed to, but I think people really embellish their stories to get on. That's my, but that was many moons ago. So back to hedgehog. I use a lot of hedgehog fibers only because it's convenient. My uh, altered stitch carries a lot of hedgehog. And I also for the colors that they don't carry, because it's LA, my local yarn store has a very small supply of mohair at most of the times of the year. They have it sometimes in the winter, but most of the year they don't carry a ton of it, so there's, you know, it, there isn't a huge selection. And I understand why, it's, it's Los Angeles, right? But I, being me, love my mohair. So Yarn Scout, hey Yarn Scout, you guys are fab. They are really great. They ship immediately, uh, great pictures online, uh, color is accurate. Um, and I was first introduced to Hedgehog. I probably saw it on you know, other podcasters' shows. And then Altered Stitch had it, so I bought it there for the first time. And I buy it there sometimes when they have what I want or need. Um, and then otherwise, I'll go to um, uh, Yarn Scout because they do have a huge selection of Hedgehog as well as many other lines, brands. So, um, so Hedgehog, I thought I was, I would try their sporty weight. This is, here's the color. It's called Kimono. It's just, it's, oh, and then as you, as you might remember, I like to ball up my own yarn. Jody from the Grocery Girls, don't say anything naughty. Here is the colorway. And I just hand wind it. Because I like doing it, which is a little nutty. So I'm making the Ann pullover. I cast this on a couple of days ago. Uh, it's knitting around, top down. It's very easy. The lace work is simple. So this will, maybe, you know, two, three weeks, I'll be done with this because, of course, I'm rotating between my different uh, works in progress, my different whips. But check out Rachel at Born and Raised. She has a lot of patterns. She does a lot of cute crop tops. They're really great. Uh, yeah, there's a lot of crop tops. And now I know I saw one of her latest designs is kind of the 1980s is coming back, which is a little scary for me because I thought, gee, been there, done that. But the designers are really giving it a fresh look, so I'm happy about that. Um, and, and so Rachel has a new sweater pattern. It's kind of a cropped um, sweater with the puffy sleeves, or somewhat. I mean, they're not huge puffy, but they're a little bigger, like from the 80s. And then I think it has ribbing on the bottom. I don't recall the name of the pattern, but I'll insert it. Probably I'll insert it here. Uh, but check out Rachel. And oh, for those of you LA peeps, for the yarn crawl, the LA yarn crawl on April 6th, please go to the Altered Stitch. I will be hanging out there. I will be videotaping some of your yarn crawl haul. I'm still getting used to my new camera, my video camera. I, it stops and I don't know what's happening and so I have to restart it. Did any of you watch um, Danny from Gemma Darlings? She baked a, a, a carrot cake for her husband's birthday. I watched it over the weekend and I immediately ran to my kitchen to see if I had enough of the ingredients. I did. 
So I baked the cake. Oh. I didn't have cream cheese. So after I baked the cake while it was cooling, I dashed over to the market, got the cream cheese, and then made that. Thanks, Danny. Thank you for turning me on to carrot cake. I haven't made it in ages. I, you know what's funny? I don't like cream cheese, not particularly, but I love cream cheese frosting. And what I do is I, I have a uh, mandarin tree, and so I plucked a mandarin and I zested some mandarin into the cream cheese frosting. Oh my god, to die for. That was super delicious. And my husband, too, he went crazy for it. I love to bake. And so I, I did a lot of cooking and baking over the weekend. And for tomorrow, I made for my little knitting group, I made some uh, b -b -b lemon curd. They're lemon bars, but they're not regular lemon bars. The curd is, it's a little thicker, like lemon curd. So I made that. I really want to try it. And my husband's going to want to try it when he gets home. But hands off. You guys, I had notes. <gasps> oh, I know what else. It was the cutest thing. So, one stitch a day, Constance, again, if you don't watch her, check her out. She is the darlingest knitter. She's just, she's so cute. Just cute as a little bug. I don't know where that expression came from. Cute as a, cute as a bug. I don't know that bugs are so cute. I guess some of them are. So Constance did this really cool thing. So I'm going to copy you, Constance. I have got a couple of patterns that, of course, they come across all of us, right? They come across your Instagram feed or your friends on Ravelry, and you say, oh, my God, I'm putting that in my queue. And to add to my queue, I saw something on Instagram about a week or two ago, so I immediately ran out and purchased the pattern. It is designed by Irene Lynn. Mmm... It's called the Hana. I don't know if it's Hannah or Hana jumper. And she says jumper. So I'm guessing she might be Brit I because she uses the word jumper, she must be from uh an English British speaking part of the world. Or Brit, you know. So this that can you see with the plastic? Maybe I should take it out of the plastic, the glare. Here it is. Bahana Jumper by Irene Lynn. And if I remember, it's knit, yes, it's knit in the round. It's knit on larger needles. Um, so it'll go quickly. I'll put this on the side because I don't need it for the summer, but it'll be a great uh, fall and winter garment. Gosh, you know, I've already, for Ry I'm thinking, oh, Rhinebeck, but I also want to create your own barnyard, that beautiful with the sheep and the dog and the fence. I still want to do that for Rhinebeck as well. So what I could do is every hour, you know, change my sweater to a different sweater that I knit up for Rhinebeck. And then there's also our lovely Susan Crawford. We love you, Susan Crawford. Had a, a sale on her patterns about a week ago. And I purchased the... What is... Oh, I'm sorry. What is this one called? I apologize. Ah. Oh, here it is. Sorry, sorry. The Sun Ray Ribbing sweater. And again, this is not going to show up well. I will show you the pattern, but I'll try to remember to take a photograph, uh, like a screenshot, and I'll insert that. You really don't get a good sense of the sweater because it's in black and white. So if I remember, I will take a picture and insert it. Women in the 40s, if you watch old movies, right, the women were, they were bold and sassy and, you know, think of Katherine Hepburn. Watch the original women, the movie Women. The whole cast is amazing. The women are strong, they're independent, they're opinionated, they are 
feminists of the 1940s. And so when I look at these designs from the 1940s, that's what I think of. I really think of, you know, powerful women, um, confident women, and I like that. It, it just, it gives me a nice feeling. So I'm looking for it. I may make this. This one, the sweater is knit in wool. And so I'm wondering, that's warm for LA. So maybe, maybe I'll play with it. I'll see. We'll see. Uh, oh, but the women. I'm going to list that below too. Uh, because why can't I think of that other actress's name? Oh my god. Oh, Jeepers Creepers. You guys might remember. I'd have to see my brain, my old brain. I'll have to go look it up. It's on the tip of my tongue. She was with Cary Grant. She was his secretary. At one, oh, a journalist. She was a journalist. And she's very fast-talking. Um, dark hair, tall, slender. Oh, it's going to kill me. Oh, well, if you haven't seen it. And the remake with Meg Ryan, it does not hold a candle to the original. So definitely see The Women, the 1940s version. Or maybe it was even in the late 30s, but I think the 40s. The Women. I was recording some music. I was recording myself dancing in music, so that's my little tambourine. Sorry for the noise. So the Patty Lyons, right, the Roselle T. Cal. I'm sure many of you have signed up. If you haven't, do sign up. Um, I did, I, have, I was reluctant to buy yet more yarn. And the recommended yarn is a cotton yarn with 10% wool, which would really be great because cotton can sometimes be a pain in the backside to work with. But anyway, I had cotton yarn. I had Cascade Ultra Pima Cotton. So I made, excuse the crinkling, I made, based on Patty Lyon's gauge swatch on her tutorial, you guys, even if you don't want to make the tea, or, you know, you've got so much on the needles you don't think you'll finish it, get, buy the pattern, and at least it is, buy the pattern. All the videos, all the tutorials that are going to be surrounding this cow are so worth it. I watched the swatch, I watched the blocking, I, all the videos Patty makes available to you for this cow uh, so that you really learn. So, um... One thing, so I did not do a lot of, a lot of us when we do a swatch, and as you know, I don't always do a swatch, or rarely, but I decided I'm going to do a swatch, so I did a swatch. Unfortunately, this fabric is a little dense, and I posted on the Cal uh, Ravelry page, you know, I posted this, and then Patty suggested, because I was concerned about the density, and she said, you know, and I said, too, I was... Uh, I went down a needle size and the fabric was already dense and I was going to have to make some mathematical adjustments to the pattern because my gauge was still too big and if I went down even another needle size it would be even denser. So Patty suggested and I took her advice because she was right. Uh, I got the yarn from Webbs. I ordered it and they were great. Sometimes it takes a while to come to the West Coast. But they were great. You know, it, you can order directly through the pattern website and the Ravelry website for the cal. You can order the yarn, and they'll know it's for this cal, and they'll send it out right away. I ordered separately because I had some other things I was ordering. So I just wrote down in the notes that this is for the cal, so I do need this uh, as quickly as possible. And they shipped it out right away. I was very happy. Thank you, Webs, America's Yarn Store. So, uh, but I'm happy with this swatch. So Patty Lyons tells you how to do the swatch. And I really thought about what I was doing. I didn't just race through it just to get it done. You know, do you guys do that? I do that a lot. I'm racing or I think, oh, I'm, I'm knitting so fast. But then I look at my work 
And I, we are not machines, so I know the tension it will not be 100% consistent. However, if we are conscientious, if we want to be, uh, some of us just nip for the heck of it, and maybe that you know, and that's great. That might be less important. Um, I'm a little <sighs> anal retentive, I guess. Uh, so I do want my stitches to be as as even as possible. Um, and one thing I learned from the Patty Lyons thing was a thing called rowing out. So, which I noticed I do have some of that issue in my knitting. Not all the time, maybe 5% of the time, let's say, but I still don't like that it's there. And I often wondered what the problem, what I was doing wrong. So definitely this cal, I don't want to give you the secrets because it's all part of the cal, but definitely um, watch watch Christy Glass and Patty Lyons interview, sign up for the Cal, and uh, get your pattern, and then watch the tutorials. They're really great. We all think we know how to swatch. We don't. Maybe we do. Maybe you do. I did not know the 100% correct way to swatch, so I'm super thrilled that Patty helped me do a better job. So I did my new swatch. I have not yet pinned it to pink paper. Uh, oh, alliteration. Pinned it to pink paper. All the peas. Uh, so I did my swatch. I cheated. I didn't make it quite as big because I thought I was pretty consistent. And I was sort of scolding myself saying, oh, you don't need to swatch more. Because really, I wanted it a little longer. But I seem to have been fairly consistent. So I decided, okay, I'm going to stop. And uh, the fabric is much nicer. So thank you, Patty, for urging me to get the appropriate yarn. So this is a Valley Yarns yarn. It's cotton with just a little hint of wool in it. Um, I think this is called charcoal, but it looks black to me, right? That looks black. I know, it's, it's not... I, Working with dark yarns can be a, a challenge, but I really, um, that was the only color that really spoke to me that was available. There were some that were nice, but they didn't have enough. I'm going with the black. And, um, yeah, so join the cow. Even, you know, even if you don't want to make the whole garment, or just start it. Um, and I think you'll be really happy because there's a lot of useful tutorials that will really help uh, yeah. your knitting. You can kick it up a notch. Who was that chef that I am so out of it? I do not watch regular television. I have not had regular TV, satellite, cable for many years. We only have Netflix. That's the only way I get television. And people say, well, how do you get your news? Well, you have your cell phone, the, you know, the, the computer. I listen to the radio in the morning. Yes, I listen to the radio in my house. I love, my husband has an old radio from the 1960s that his mother had. Uh, and he inherited it after she passed. And at first I hated the radio. And it's so old-fashioned. It has these old tubes. It's not digital. But the thing still works. We've never had it serviced. It is the best. The sound is great. Sometimes, for all the great advances of technology, sometimes the old, simple technology was superior. It, it just was. You know, things didn't break down like now. Everything breaks down after a couple of years because of all the you know, the digital components and computer chips. So I think that is enough for today. I wish everyone a super fabulous weekend and next couple of weeks. For those of you that will be in New York that I will run into, yay, I can't wait to see you. And the rest of you, I will see you soon with my New York yarny goodness. Okay, thanks for watching, guys. Bye.